My name is Josephine Latimban Carina Turner. I am half blonde from Pulong Block, South Cotabato. I is a naturalized American citizen living in Atlanta, USA. For the FM3 video documentary production under the course Philippine Art as a Cultural Text, I would like to focus on the blonde tabi, the traditional textile among the blonde indigenous peoples group of the Philippines, especially from the works of Bai Yabing Masalun Dulo. Now, what is tabi? The tabi is the traditional blonde ikat fabric from abaca. Considered as an important blonde crafting technology, its practice is traditionally reserved to women of high status. Mabal, on the other hand, is the blonde term for weaving that has a strong spiritual context in the blonde society and a recognized deity Furalu as the goddess of weaving. As a craft that has a long history, the tabi has a strong presence in traditional blonde society. Its value can assign prestige and rank in the community. In Region 12, Philippines, there are only two living Mabal Tabi cultural masters. One of them is Baia Bing Masalundulo, who is an active blonde weaver and a master of Mabal Tabi technique. Her works are prized by textile collectors and has been featured in the 2004 Mindanao Tourism Expo in Davao and also in the second ASEAN Traditional Textile Symposium from February 1 to 3rd in 2009 at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. She is also the first cultural master for Blanc Tabi for the School of Living Tradition in Lamlifo in Sarangani Province in 2005 that was funded by the National Commission for the Culture and the Arts. Where do the colors came from? The colors used are red, called as Lago in Blaan. You can also make it uh, to purple by adding slaked lime to the dye. And also black color from the plant called Pnalum, yellow from turmeric called Kunil in Blaan, orange or ochre from the Bexa aureliana, a common name of it is called as Kluga in Blaan, green from the leaves shrub called Talum. And for the Mabal Tabi to be sustained, it also entails the planting of this plant species where the colors came from. Abaca, or lotai as Blaan called it, takes a long time to prepare. You need to cut the abaca plant, cut the abaca trunk, and slicing them into smaller pieces for stripping, stripping off the abaca fibers, air drying and cleaning up of the stripped abaca, and bundling up the stripped abaca. Air drying and stripping abaca fibers for a maximum of one to three days until the desired dried texture is achieved. The process is then followed by a mlot lutai, that is a separating of bundled fibers and also cleaning up to get fibers of the same length. This is the tedious part of making the abaca fiber soft. It is like the act of dry washing the fibers that get crumpled to make it soft. The next stage would be the tambong, which is the cyclical process of choosing each abaca fiber or strand and have it connected or tied from one end to another to get the desired length prior to dyeing and the designing process. And there goes lamga, which is the process where abaca fibers are cooked with natural dyes. And the abaca fiber is on the dyeing process. Knalum leaves and roots are used for black dye and lamga is like the cooking, boiling of design, designed abaca fibers that can take at least three days to get the maximum stain saturation point of the natural dyes. The dyed abaca fibers are then balled up according to their color. Now let's take a closer look on the parts of the loom. There is blilu, the atkaral or gutamkaral, the anket, the bluan, bang, turn, lagan, the algageng or the backstrap, bangan, and lungan. Those are the parts of the loom in the Blaan Tabi weaving. Sma'i is the process in which you arrange the abaca fiber in the tying frame. The size measurement of the tabi is also determined in this stage. It can be big or small. There is also a required process in order to do the actual designing stage. It is the alignment for each of the fiber in the tying frame. And it is followed by malek at ne, which is the process of arranging the abaca fibers accordingly in the salgaan, the tying frame. 
Then alternately insert the two fine pieces of bamboo sticks called nu in between the abaca fibers one by one. It needs focus and attention to details to avoid mistakes and missing the fibers in, in, in its proper order. After that, there is the process of mabaltulan, wherein the abaca fibers are woven half an inch so that they will be intact as a base for the rest of the fibers and avoid gaps as well as entanglements. Then followed by snimsi, which is the process of pressing the designed white parts of the abaca fiber and bend it for easy washing with lumit or the ash. The ash serves as the soap for washing of the abaca fiber once designing is done. And then antah ibad, which is the process of exposing the white portion of the fiber previously covered tied during the designing process by untying the abaca fibers and to check if it fully dyed or cooked. Then there goes the hardest part of the mabal tabi, which is the designing stage called ambad in blaan term. The tabi designs have different names attributed largely to the dominant pattern as a result of dream interpretation and imagination inspired from the animist beliefs among the blondes. This is the process that takes the longest time in uh, the preparation of uh, for prior to the weaving. Then you have to do the setting up of the loom to be ready for weaving involving the arranging of the design fibers one by one and according to the color arrangement and design. Transferring the finished design takes a long time and needs focus so that the design will not be messed up when the weaving process is being done. Mimo Anket is the process of tying each strand of abaca fiber to separate them and avoid entangles. Tying material, blue color is used is a plastic from available corn sacks or sacco. It takes at least half a day to do and is the tedious part of abaca fiber preparation prior to weaving. It takes lots of focus and chatting is not allowed so that no mistakes will be made in missing each fiber that needs to be tied. The plastic tie will not only be taken out will only be taken out once the weaving is done. If there is no tie to hold each fiber in place, weaving process would not be made possible at all. So once the loom setup is successfully done, the next thing to do is the weaving called mabal. This takes the longest time in all of the processes. And once weaving is done, the textile will be taken off the loom and uh, it will be subjected to, sh to polishing and ironing called the bamblalo stage using a seashell. The shell will be pressed onto the textile until it smoothens and becomes shiny too. This is one step closer to complete the whole process. This is part of the male role in the Mabal Tabi culture after stripping off the abaca fibers. Then the Tabi panels will be sewn and will be made into a tubular skirt called the Feng. That is why we have the Blaan Tabi the Feng. The polishing materials used are called blalo the seashell, talo the beeswax, turak, wasp, or biao, coming from uh, a big fruit tree that makes it so much more shiny. And the beeswax is also coming from, um, called by the blood as sugan. My observations on the quality work of Baia Bing Masalundulo is that the distinctive design motifs is, should be visible, distinguishable. Finished tabi must be soft. The blaan tabi is never with solid alternating colors as it makes it looks bad. Great balance in the saturation of colors that you can see distinctively the natural dyes used for each part of the finished design. This is very important for preservation of the color of the patterns for the finished product to withstand changes in environmental conditions. Finished tabi must have a beautiful luster or glassy sheen aided by the use of beeswax during polishing. Intact strands, fibers, consistency in the texture as well as size of the fibers used reflected in the total quality of the finished tabi. Weaving must be seamless, smooth, 
and patterns are not distorted or obviously altered due to replacement of strands that broke off to have a beautiful finished tabby. The finished tabby is usually prayed or a ritual was done by the cultural master and the weavers as a blessing before giving it to someone or to the intended person who wanted to have a tabby. It is a highly spiritual aspect of having the tabby as a precious cultural wealth among the members of the community. This is the tradition that sets it apart from just producing tabby solely for commercial purposes and neglect neglecting the cultural connectivity of having tabby. The tabby is expensive because producing it is an output of a hobby and not a commercial production line. Thus, it follows the normal cycle of doing weaving activities based on appropriate times of the day, based on the discipline and spiritual observance in all steps and following the lead of the cultural master and consistency in all processes, no shortcuts. It is the passion of making the tabi that makes it beautiful. I'm hopeful that uh, the students of Fu Bing will truly sustain the high standards of discipline she is instilling in her skills transfer to them and that they would really value the tabi as a cultural material of the blondes. The most prized of all the tabi is the blonde tabi hamlato as shown in her picture and also Fuya being made a fusion for the very first time of tabi hamlato with a tabi to kaifula in the middle and in the video you can also see how she showed it to me how wide it is how big it is and this is her first work too <laughs> In September 2015, Leonardo Ray Salazar Carreño did an exhibition for the masterworks of Yabing Masalun Dulu in General Santa City. Her being the last cultural bearer of the Mabal Tabi in South Cotabato was also conferred the Kanfulung Ba'i Award or citation from the Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Colleges. Later part of that year, in 2015, she was also nominated by Leonardo Ray Carino as one of the Gamaba or the Gawad Malilika ng Bayan, National Living Treasure of the Philippines. Her contributions to her community and to the, uh, to the, to the Philippine art is worthy to be recognized. And that is why I chose her to be featured for this Philippine art and culture as a cultural text. Uh-huh. Uh, amen. Bong ti amen na ye. Uh, bong amen do ta i gawag bamlek gis digil.